Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production. And today I want to go over how to use M cabinet to add a kind of room sound and maybe adjust the room sound, you know, however you like. Uh, this is like a new trick I just came up with. Hopefully you enjoy it. And those that might like it are those that think that, you know, uh, these profiles and M cabinet or just like an impulse response in general is just a little bit too dry and it doesn't feel real enough, especially if you're playing with headphones or something. You want something more, I don't know, something with some ambiance around it and a little bit of air. And I'll show you how to do that. So what we're going to use is M cabinet MB. For those that are wondering, M cabinet MB comes with M cabinet. So if you buy M cabinet, you get the MB version, the multiband version for free. So just look on your computer if you already have it. The first thing we're going to do is get rid of these bands. We don't need this many. We only need actually at first just two. It's easy. So set that to two. Okay. Now what we have is we have it divided by frequency, and we don't want that. What we're going to do now is right-click again and set this to serial. So this one, I think this actually might be new. What this does is just, it just goes from band 1 into band 2. I guess it could go into band 3, 4, 5, but we don't need that. We just need two bands. So set this to serial. Next thing we need to do is first set this to nothing and band 2. We're going to set this to blank. All we need is just nothing going through here. Now we can solo this band, I'm not sure if it makes a difference really, but uh, just find a sound that you like. I'm going to use this clean machine here. Let me move this up a little bit, maybe turn the gain down. It sounds like this. Make that sound however you like. Now you're saying, you're probably thinking, hey, doesn't it have the room feature here? And this does add a room sound. But what we're going to do is actually make this more adjustable, and I think it'll sound a little bit better and some, somewhat easier to use, I think. But we have that now, and now that we have our basic sound, uh, we can do whatever we want with it. If you're thinking like, hey, I don't like that sound, I want to use my own impulse response or whatever, you can do the same thing, and all you have to do is just go in here, and you can analyze an IR here. Don't do it in band two, do this in band one, and put your own impulse response. It doesn't really matter for this part. Just get a sound that you like. Now that we have that, we're going to look over to band two. Turn the solo off. Now this does nothing. You see the straight line? That just means there's no EQing, no nothing. You don't hear any difference between that and this. It's the exact same. What we're going to do now is we're going to add that room sound. And actually, we're not going to use reverb. We're going to just use some resonances, which will sound almost the same. We're going to go into W1. This is our widener. Just turn it on. Now, once I play it, you'll hear that, you know, wideness and a little bit of a, like a reverb sound like this. From here, what we can do is we can actually change this in a number of ways. You can change the character, and if you look here, how it changes. Set that however you feel is good. In general, I would say that when you see more of the roughness in here, it's going to equal a larger sounding room. Whereas if you see something that's a little bit more sparse and smooth, that's you're not going to hear too much. It's going to be like a really small room. So we can adjust the character. Another one we can adjust is the smoothing. This one you see, I'll put it all the way here and I'll let you hear what it sounds like. It sounds like almost no room sound, but if I turn it to zero. So you can almost think of that as like your room size. So I'll set it here. For this, I want the depth at 100, but you can change the algorithm here. So you can look to see which each algorithm does. And if you're still not liking that, you can use the C to change these randomly. To me, that sounds like a big room. It may not be what I always like, but the nice thing with this is 
we can use this and you can hear it for this demonstration purposes. But actually, for your own projects, find something that sounds good for you. Now that we have this, this is almost done. Now, one of the good things we can do about th with this is we can now shape the sound of the room using EQ. So I can take this and make this like a really fat sounding room like this. Maybe too fat. If you're thinking, ah, it's too much pick attack, we can go in here. We could almost DS it if you wanted to. I could set it wherever I find the pick attack and then I could use dynamics or I can just move the gain down like this. And cut off some of the bass if you want. You can really do any kind of shaping here that you want. Now you're thinking, okay, well I'm getting lots of the reverb sound, but what if I want some of the dry sound in? It's very easy. Just use the wet dry control. So now we have it 100% wet. Dry. You can see what a big difference that makes. From here, actually let me turn it up just a little bit. You can blend it wherever you like. So I think I'm oh, around 50%. What we have there is we have a mix between both of them, and you can set this however you like. And to me, this is much better because, one, it sounds like if I have it completely dry, it's right up against my ear. This is too dry, and if I'm playing with headphones or something, like, oh, this is just annoying. But you don't have to have it 100% wet. You can just set it, no, well, maybe 45%. To me, it sounds like I'm in a nice room. I'll show you a few other things that you can change here also. Let's go into the cabinet here, back here, in uh, band two. And if you don't want it in stereo, I'll show you the meters here, stereo meter. Now it's fairly wide. But if you're doing a project and you're like, I don't want this stereo guitar, just change the widening to mono here. And you can still hear that uh, reverb, but it's not in stereo anymore, so. Is with it on. And of course, as I said before, you can blend that however you like. And that's really good. You could also use the tilt if you wanted to get really bassy or trebly, like this. Etc. There's lots of things you can do. And I'll show you one more thing here. Let me turn these off. So I use the W1, but there's actually another way. You could actually use an impulse response of a room and use it in here. It won't be as large as the actual room sound because this is changing it, uh, I believe using a minimum phase transformation. So for a long reverb, it won't give you the whole tail, but it will give you the basic EQ information. So if we analyze the IR here, let's try, uh, I don't know, Ruby Room. There, this is what we have. So this is with it off, the dry sound. This is with the Ruby Room on. So you can hear it actually gives it an ambiance. If you want it in stereo, you can use the widener again. You might want to turn it down a little bit, but that's kind of up to you. I have it all the way up, it sounds like this. You think, oh, that kind of sounds nice. Move it here. If you think uh, this is kind of doing too much, I want the basic EQ shape, but I don't want all these resonances so it sounds like a, a reverb, and you kind of want to shape everything yourself, use this smoothing here, like this. And now you see the blue, that is your EQ curve. So it only sounds slightly different. So this is with it off. On. So you can see there are some differences. And of course, this will also depend on which impulse response you load here. Beep, beep, beep. 
this has a big difference, especially in the mids. And you can do lots of things with that. And then when you add the reverb on there. By smoothing it out, you don't have uh, the as many resonances from the profile, the impulse response. So it sounds a little bit smoother. And using this and using the EQ, you can come up with any combination you want. And obviously you can save this in M cabinet. And it's great. You have that room sound that you can use for your headphone playing or use in your music. And you have a lot of control that you wouldn't have if you just used a reverb impulse response. You can kind of make your own impulse response sound with this. So I hope you like this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Uh, leave me any questions or comments down below and check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. Till next time, see you.